You're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. Uh, it's fitting, although it was not anticipated before I saw this bill from Charlie Angus that we have on Michael Binion, who uh, we started the series with, and, and now we uh, inadvertently get to end it with him as well uh, from the Modern Miracle Network. Michael, it's always good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on today. Glad to be here. I'm actually down in in uh, Houston and at the NAEP show, so big uh, big oil and gas conference, and I've just managed to get out. I don't think I've got the perfect quiet place, but I'm but I'm happy. All right. Well, we'll we'll take in the uh, the sights of Houston, where I would uh, much rather be from a weather perspective right now. I just th- this bill that has been proposed. I mean, it's bonkers, and most private members' bills don't get a a hearing and and are unlikely to pass. But but it it reflects, I think, an attitude which is very pervasive among people that do have tremendous influence here. And I, I just wanted to get your take on this first. I mean, is this have you ever heard of anything going after your industry as aggressively as this? You know, this, they've been signaling this idea for quite some time that somehow fossil fuels are similar to cigarettes. And of course, this whole bill is patterned on the, the, you know, the advertising and warning labels, everything that has to go on, on cigarettes on, on the basis that I think that there was back in the 70s or whenever there was, in fact, uh, some cigarette companies that were caught doing some uh, promotion of their product without maybe talking about some of the risks of their product. So I think that's the analogy they're trying to create. The problem... The, the problem that I have with this bill is, one, is the whole preamble is based not on mainstream science. Like, as the International Panel on Climate Change doesn't agree with almost everything in their preamble. This is a this is a extreme, extreme view of apocalyptic, uh, apocalyptic warnings about the possibility of, of climate change, which I don't, as I said, the mainstream science I don't think agrees with. The other thing is fossil fuels have saved millions and millions, if not billions of people, uh, and made everybody's life better. We, it, 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 it's net very positive for human health, as we've seen in, uh, you know, since we started using fossil fuels in the 1800s and in child mortality rates and longevity and, and health outcomes and equality, all these all these things are literally miraculous in society. And so that, that obviously is completely different than the cigarettes. Um, and, and then I guess to finalize it, I think, you know, if they were to go ahead with what they're saying to say, you know, you're not allowed to say that natural gas has less emissions than coal because mm-hmm. that was promoting a fossil fuel. Well, the environmental damage of not being able to pick the best fuel and the best energy in its best place has been already well demonstrated, for example, by our project in Quebec, where you know, hundreds and you know, thousands of megatons have, 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 you know, would have been saved if only we'd been allowed to go ahead with a, a fuel that, is, that has lower environmental impacts. It's, all, it, it's like you said at the beginning, it's bonkers. Yeah, and, and I would point out as well when with that tobacco comparison that this bill doesn't go after deceptive advertising. Could I be I'd be completely on board with some uh, measured regulation on deceptive or dishonest advertising. This goes after truthful uh, advertising and promotion of the sector, and and one that that I find particularly jarring, especially for Charlie Angus, who's from Northern Ontario and and should know Indigenous communities quite well, is that you cannot even promote how these projects can benefit indigenous people and, and i've met through through introductions from from you uh indigenous advocates for the energy sector that don't just support it as a canadian economic project but specifically for indigenous communities and these people could literally be jailed for having these same conversations publicly i know you, you know i I've, I've often said that the problem with the energy debate that we've had and this is you know this is our one of our modern miracle network uh, messages is we've been for too long comparing the benefits of one kind of energy alternatives with the negative impacts of another kind of energy, fossil fuels. But what about the benefits of fossil fuels, which literally are miraculous? And and wh- why are we not talking about some of the impacts of alternatives, which are pretty large? Like, and I, and I and we're 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 all of the above and put the best energy in its best place. But we're also for a reasoned conversation on energy, where we talk about benefits and the impacts, not just one or the other. And and as you said, this bill would say we're going to make it illegal, illegal to talk about the benefits of fossil fuels. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, your entire initiative at Modern Miracle Network is to promote the miracle of hydrocarbon. So, so you're you and your board are getting thrown in the slammer when this bill passes, if it passes, right? Well, if we were to dare to advertise, I guess it's yeah, yeah. it's crazy, right? It's it, it, it's crazy, and so we're we're trying to promote, I think, a rational conversation, not not to ignore the impacts that fossil fuels are. Just the opposite. We're we're big promoters of of technology to to deal with the impacts of fossil fuels. But we're just saying, let's not throw out a product that has created the miracle of modern society with, you know, without any thought or, or consideration. 